I look up. Harvey's dad is coming towards me. I sit tall, sniffing, and wipe my teary cheeks. But he's not coming for me. He strides past me to the edge of the glade. I watch him, hacking his way through the undergrowth, half in awe, half in fear. Even if he is Harvey's dad, I still don't trust him one bit. I can't unremember the image of him with his stone knife in the river. I can't forget what he so nearly did to poor little Mothka. Why? She's just a tiny baby. Then Harvey's dad does something I don't expect. He stoops down and starts gathering flowers. Those big, white, honeysuckle flowers the size of my hand. He straightens up and sees me looking at him. Milk flower, he says gruffly. He goes back to Harby and Mothka and sits down with them on the edge of the hollow. I expect him to lay the flowers next to Harby's mum, but he doesn't. One by one, he hands them to Harby, who feeds the baby nectar from the flowers. She suckles blossom after blossom until she's had enough. Then she sleeps. Milk flower, I whisper in wonder. I wonder how many milk flowers a tiny baby needs in a day, a week, a month. And what about winter? I bite my lip. Harvey's dad looks over at me. For a long, hard second, we hold each other's look. Then Harvey takes something from the little pouch at his waist. It's the deer tooth, the one I found in the hut. He shows it to his dad. From Mothka, Pa. Ma make deer tooth from Mothka says Harby. Harby's pa nods, smiling sadly. He rummages in his own leather pouch, pulls out some twine and cuts it with his stone knife before handing it to Harby. Harby threads the deer tooth onto the twine through its little hole and ties it loosely around his sister's neck. Make safe, Mothka, he says, drawing an invisible circle around the deer tooth on the baby's chest. Harby hands the baby to his pa. I watch the huge, fierce man stroke a gentle circle too. Make safe, Mothka, he echoes. Then he gets up and lays her gently back down on the mossy bed I found for her. As he turns, I notice that he's wearing a deer tooth around his neck too, but his looks older, yellower, more scratched and weather-worn. Harby's dad walks back to the hollow and lowers himself carefully down to kneel next to Harby's mum. He lifts the beautiful spear made from moon-pale wood and runs his hand along it, stopping for a moment in the worn, smooth place where Harby's mum must have always held it. When she was alive, he closes his eyes. We give thanks, he says. We give thanks, echoes Harby. We give thanks, I whisper too. Harby's dad lays the spear next to her, then reaches forward towards her face. I strain my neck to see what he's doing. Harby's ma is wearing a deer tooth on her necklace too. Harby's pa lifts her deer tooth carefully and presses his thumb to its point. A bead of blood forms. He draws a line of blood across his forehead and softly draws one on hers. Make safe, he says, and he leans over and kisses her. Harby climbs down and kneels beside his dad. He pricks his own thumb, draws his own bloodlines, kisses his mum. Make safe, he says. I sit on the grass next to Mothka, stroking her little hand. She holds my finger tightly as she sleeps. Make safe, I whisper too. I look at Harvey and his dad and his mum all curled up together in the hollow. I think of the wolf pack and how they all slept as one, how they howled together and looked after each other, like a family would. Like my family would. My family. Where are they now? Mum in the hospital, dad in our house. Dara in his little incubator after his operation. Me here. I want to go home. I want to go home and wrap my arms tight around them all. I want to make safe. I give thanks, I whisper to my family, far, far away. Gently, 
Gently, I unwrap Mothka's hand from my finger. The low, rhythmic hum of spirit song fills the air as Harvey and his dad sing quietly to Harvey's mum, taking it in turns. Now and then, I can make out some words I know. Ma, they sing, and spear, and pa, and Mothka, like they're singing the story of themselves. A movement amongst the dappled leaves catches my eye. Someone else is watching. Goodness me, I wonder who's watching. Ah, scary bits. Okay, so I think this chapter really makes me think about family and who's in your family. And in these days when our families are separated, we can't meet everybody. What I'd like you to do for me today is just draw a little drawing of your family. So the people that live with you and perhaps if there are people that you think of as family but aren't living in your house. So whether that's you've got two sets of, of grown ups that you live with or whether you've got grandnies or uncles or aunties who are very special to you. Draw me a quick picture, label it with their names or titles of your family. Just draw a picture called my family. OK, well done, guys. <laughs> 